The Dell XPS 17 9710 promises to be one of the best like mobile creation devices ever made. It's got SD card slots, powerful CPU, and even a new Nvidia RTX graphics card. So if you wanted to use this as your mobile creation platform, how would it hold up? Let's find out. What's up everyone? I'm the Everyday Dad and if I can figure it out, you can figure it out. So I love making these videos. Obviously, as a YouTuber, I do an awful lot of video editing. I know that not everybody out there does, but I think this is a very good showing for how powerful a CPU and GPU combination can be to put it through the, you know, put it through the paces of rendering out and editing some really tough footage. So today we're actually looking for a couple of additional things. I've never used the RTX 3050 that's inside of the new XPS 15. And I remember from last year, last year the XPS 17 had an issue when under load, it wasn't able to draw enough power through the USB-C port. So we're also going to see when we're rendering and doing all this editing, because we have some pretty tough footage today, if it's actually going to be able to keep charging and keep powering itself while we're doing it. So let's hop right into it. I actually prepared this ahead of time so we don't have to muck around with it. And if you see the screen being recorded directly, it's not being recorded internal to the computer. I have an external recorder capturing the screen, so it's not taking up any of that precious CPU GPU power there. And we will be using the software called DaVinci Resolve. It is my favorite editing system when it comes to Windows. We will do a new project, so we'll say video editing video. Now there's three parts in my opinion when it comes to video editing. There's the processing, the editing, and the rendering. So let's, we're going to go through all of that and see how it works. Obviously if you've seen my videos before you'll know that DaVinci Resolve is very good when it comes to all three of those. Okay, so we will, we have the unboxing video from yesterday that we're just going to import in here. Get some video magic set up on it. Do we want to change the project frame rate to 30 frames per second? Of course we do, because 30 frames per second is the best frames per second. Okay, so here is the main shot. And we'll just do, yeah, we'll do all of them. Here's the main shot, here is the second shot, and then here is the overhead shot. Did we accidentally delete one? Whoops, right there. Okay, now we have everything overlaid. I know there are easier ways to do this, but I'm a stubborn curmudgeon and I do things my own way because you know what? I'm stubborn. That's like, I'm the everyday, we should rename the channel, the everyday stubborn dad. I'm sure my wife would, uh, would definitely agree with that. Okay, so here's the second clip. Let's move you into place. And then let's move you into place. We do all of the work off of the audio waveform, as you can see right there. Ooh, this is way too loud. That's really good. I love editing off. Once you learn to edit off of audio waveforms instead of having to look at it, you will find that you save so much time. Okay, so what we're going to do, we're going to unlink that, we're going to unlink that, and then we are just going to go ahead and delete all of that garbage audio that we don't need. It's called scratch audio in the biz. I don't, I'm not a professional at all. I'm just a goober that likes video. So we'll hide that, we'll hide that. Let's get to the processing where we're going to do our color editing first. I really like just how easy it is to get all of your LUTs and stuff dialed in. So we're using Vlog from the Lumix S5. So we actually have the Lumix LUTs already pre-installed. I'm a pretty big fan of it. I like how easy it is to just take it. And there we go. Okay, we've got our LUT. Now we need to... Let's bring up ye old. There we go. Here is our waveform monitor, which is how I really like to edit. So we'll add a little bit of contrast. Just a little bit, not too much, and a little bit of sat just saturation for flavor. There we go. I think that looks... Let's actually come over here. Let's do a little bit of a deep dive. How's it looking? That looks pretty... That looks pretty good. Okay, so color is good. Let's actually come over here to the gallery. We will grab a still, because what we're going to do, we're going to come over here, which is shot in the exact same picture profile, and we are just going to apply grade. There you go. It's that simple to make the two clips look identical. Now, we will normally, I guess, you know what, we'll do the same. No, the overhead shot was shot in a standard profile, so that's okay. Because sometimes with the overhead shot, I like doing it in standard as opposed to doing it in log, just because sometimes I cut this out throughout, like, whole bunches of videos, and it's nice to just have it already looking decent instead of having to go in and then do a bunch of crazy stuff later. But what we will do is we'll go in and we'll rotate it around 180, whoops, not 190. 180, boom, now it is the correct direction. Hold on, let's make sure, okay, yep. Looks good, looks good, so we'll hide that, hide that. 
Now what I want you to look at is while we're doing this, have you seen any stutters? Have you seen any slowdowns? This is shot in what's called H.265, which is very tough for traditional processors. But now with Ryzen and the Intel chips being so powerful, I wouldn't imagine that we're going to have too many issues with that. So the way we're going to see if there's an issue is right up here. You'll see right there, this is what your playback's at. So when it says 2997, that's what I shot it in. So that means it's working perfectly well. And again, so we've done the color. Let's get the audio processed really quickly, which is another thing that I like about DaVinci Resolve. So we will normalize audio levels and we will use this guy right here. It's a little slower than normal. Like I believe on my MacBook and the last time we did this on the, was it the Razer or was it the G14? Whichever the last one that had the Ryzen processor, the normalization did go a little faster. So this is going kind of slow today. Let's actually change track type to mono, boost the gain just a little bit. Okay, I think it looks good. I think it sounds good. So now we can go into the second part, which is the actual editing. So let's edit the intro of the video, which is what I like to do here. Um, so let's come over here. Dell has updated their XPS 17 line with new They did. So let's actually show that right there. So now we're showing the laptop. We'll cut it again. Hide. Yeah, I'm not seeing a single slow. This is going incredibly smooth. I'm really impressed. Let's do a crop in right there. So we will do the select cut, select cut, come back over to here. We will zoom in, come back over, there we go. Zoom in a little more, position me down a little bit so it's a little more dramatic. It really was much heavier than I thought it would be. Okay, we'll come back over here. What's up, everyone? So let's cut straight to the good stuff. Okay. Enhance. Enhance. What's up, everyone? I'm the everyday dad. If I can figure it out. Whoop, whoop, whoop. There's the, there's the point in. You see, we can see it on the waveform. So let's cut there. Man, that was a quick you can figure it out uh, yesterday. Let's also come over here. Zoom in. Whoa, not out. Zoom in. Position down. Zoom in a little more. Position down a little more again. And. Yeah, I am super excited about it. Man, the audio sounds really good. These speakers are doing a good job. You're, I know you're not going to be able to hear it as clear because the microphone's like right here, but I'm listening in on this and the speakers sound real good. Okay, now that's, I mean, I think that's good enough. We've edited the first minute of the video. I don't need to waste all of y'all's time today uh, walking through each and every step. So what we're going to do, let's go out to, I think we can safely say that this, the version with the eight core i7, the RTX 3050 at 70 Watts. I believe that's what we said yesterday, um, is perfectly fine for 4k video editing. I mean, you just saw it right here. I haven't seen a slowdown. I haven't seen anything, which is, I mean, that's not a foregone conclusion when it comes to laptops, especially business laptops doing this, these really tough codecs. Uh, so let's actually, we'll do our rendering test next. Let's come out here. We'll take a five minute clip. So we got five right through here. So let's cut, 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 cut. So we'll turn you on, turn you on, turn you on, turn you on. We'll just keep the CPU guessing, right? We'll just like, we'll keep the CPU on its toes by having it render a whole bunch of different things. We've got this, it's three layers of 4K, 30 frames per second, 10 bit, H.265, basically a nightmare for computers designed not that long ago. So here we'll go video editing. I cannot spell today. Editing test. We'll just do it to the desktop. Save. We'll do it to MP4. We will use, you want to make sure that when you're using DaVinci Resolve, if you have the studio version, set it to your graphics card um, for your encoder because you very much want to use hardware encoding with the new NVIDIA um, encoders. Okay, we'll save everything else. Pretty standard stuff. We'll save it to 4K, automatic quality. Okay, we will add it to the render queue. Okay, now let's get out our handy dandy. It says it on here, but I also want to time it at the same time to make sure we're all being honest with ourselves. See, we got our stopwatch, so we're gonna go to render all and go. Okay, now you can look up here and see how fast it's going 
and it's rendering. And this is rendering at 60 frames per second, which is fabulous, 61. So that's double, that's more than double real time. That's impressive. Um, so I consider real time rendering to be a pretty good benchmark, but double real time is like the high end benchmark. And this is, I mean, it's crushing it. This is going faster than the Razer Blade 14 we had in here last week that had the Ryzen 9 processor and had the RTX 3060 as opposed to the 3050. So that's, I'm really impressed. Uh, I mean, you can hear the fans. The fans have definitely turned on right now because we are asking an awful lot of this business class laptop. But what I want to see, keep looking down here. Um, how is the battery doing? Still at 100%, power mode plugged in. Um, we haven't... We'll let this go the whole time. I won't hold you here the entire time, but we're going to keep this up and make sure that even when it's doing this big task of video editing over the next couple of minutes, that we're not drawing too much power. So we'll be back in just a second. Okay, we're actually back a lot faster than I thought we would be. Um, we're only at 2 minutes and 15 seconds, and we're getting ready to finish up. So as soon as this pops up showing that it's done, we'll hit stop. Two, one, stop. Okay, it took two minutes and 25 seconds to render out that five minute clip. So more, so faster than double real time, which is insanely impressive. And as you'll see, we're still plugged in fully charged. We didn't lose any battery life on just the balanced setting. So that there is probably a way out there to overtax the power and to overtax what kind of power draw you can get through USB-C. But if this can hold up for this kind of video editing, that's good enough for me. Like that's good enough for me. And I bet you that's good enough for most working professionals. So I would say I'm very impressed by this. I wasn't exactly expecting bad performance, but I wasn't expecting it to be this good. This is really going to make, these new XPS computers are really going to make it hard for me to stick with my MacBooks uh, for my travel computers. Because I do, I bounce between Mac and Windows an awful lot. And I love, love the hardware of these XPS computers. I cannot wait for the XPS 15 to get in here. That's going to be the one that's really, the 17 is great, but it's a little too big for what I would want to do. Um, but rambling story aside, could you use this as your only video editing computer? And does this work very well as an editing machine? Absolutely. I mean, you just saw this thing performed fantastically well. I mean, it did just as well, if not better than some of those really beefy gaming laptops that we've checked out over the last couple of months. And those are bigger. They're louder. They have, they do have better GPUs and CPUs, but they don't have as good a screen. They don't have as good typing experience. They don't have all the Thunderbolt four ports. They don't have SD card slots. So this is the XPS 17 is a very enticing media creation platform. Like I'm very impressed by that. And if you like this video and you would like to check out the unboxing and my initial impressions of this computer, you can find that by clicking right here. Click, 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 click. Thanks for watching.